Welcome back to a new episode of Live in Korea. Uh, Liam and I are on our way to the Science uh, Museum, which is um, a little establishment just a kilometer away or so from our house. And it's a place where kids can go and experiment. Um, they've got different things for children to do. They can pull and push things and see how different forces work, uh, physical forces work. Uh, there's some magnets, there's some number calculations, equipment, there is a 4D experience zone, although Liam is still too little to get in on that piece of attraction, but uh, but there's a bunch of other activities that we can do, uh, shifting mirrors, um, kaleidoscopes, um, what else is there? Um, uh, there's a bunch of stuff, there are about four floors, um, all dedicated to the exploration of science for children. Uh, in addition to that, there is a planetarium, which unfortunately has not been open uh, in some time. I haven't seen it open in a while, but it's there nonetheless. And that's where we're going, Liam. Bum, bum. So we're gonna go to the first floor of the building and uh, we're meeting up with some of Liam's friends and their moms. Uh, which may be interesting as uh, I don't know how how good their English is uh, Hopefully a little bit better than my Korean, but chances are it isn't We're we've just entered a garage, so I guess it may now be a good idea to tell you that Liam is a fantastic kid. He's sensitive. He's caring. He loves to play games. He loves his friends. He loves his sister, although he does like to act out like any other boy. We usually come here with his big sister, Mali, but this time around it was just us, just the boys, well, and the two mothers that were included, who came with their boys. Um, I didn't really interact with Liam much during this time, because um, he was having fun with his friends, but I just loved hanging out with him and being able to spend the time and, um, and watch him grow. It happens so fast, and before you know it, they'll be all grown up. Parents are suckers, or maybe it's just me. But every time I, every minute that I don't spend with my kids, I feel like I'm missing out. So my life is really just devoted to my work and my family. And if I don't have time to spend with them, um, I feel like I'm missing out on stuff. It's great watching them growing up. And being able to do things like this is fantastic. <laughs> Dude, how does this work? Liam. You busy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Does a picture show up when you paint water on it, Liam? Yeah. It's interesting. What kind of picture is it? Uh, 
think you guys are cheating. The picture was ready here. You're not actually using paint, are you? What? You're not actually using paint. <laughs> you are? Oh, you're very talented. This exercise machine, uh, it blows air through the channels. Uh, kids pop in balls in the little holes, um, and there is a puff of air that blows the balls up through the tubes um, into these little machines, which then roll down into another tube, and then the tube puffs out some more air, and the balls are propel propelled into this big container right there. Uh, at one point in time, uh, whenever the caretakers there decide to pull the lever up that's by the wall, all these balls come tumbling down. Uh, Liam used to be able to go inside uh, in the area where all the balls are, but I guess now since he's a little too big, um, kids of his age and his size are a problem. So uh, when he came in here in this area with his friend, uh, one of the ladies started um, uh, started asking him how old he was and since Liam is six six and a half almost seven years in Korean age Because uh, in Korea people counted uh, differently uh, In Korea you're one years old by the time So since Liam is seven years old as you can see the lady is asking him how old he is he answers And then he says she tells him that he needs to get out and he does That's the kind of kid he is He follows the rules I guess So the science museum is quite cool. There's a lot of stuff. We didn't get a chance to go to the second floor um, simply because we ran out of time. We, we got there pretty late. Um, I think it was on a Saturday. Um, the museum closes at around 5.30. We got there around 4.30. We spent some time on the first floor, um, which basically is a big advertising, advertisement for, for some of the conglomerates here, uh, like Lotte and uh, some other places um, but they've got activities where kids can push and pull things and apparently that's a lot of fun um, and so this where the boys are now is on the second floor this is the second floor of the building but the first floor of of the science museum really um, uh, they, there are more activities on the third and fourth floors. Um, perhaps they're directed at a little older audiences. Um, they involve more um, physics. Uh, it's got more. There are more activities devoted to uh, the movements of levers and magnets and measurements, um, uh, creating of electricity and uh, conductivity and such things but we didn't get a chance to go up there on this particular trip. This part of the Science Museum is kind of a, a nature exploration part. And it's unfortunately the last one that we were able to see before they shut down. Korean beer, only 20 left. This is a simulation of 
a quicksand, I think. The surface is soft and jumpy. Um, you can hop on it and bounce around. Um, the bear is a Korean bear type, um, which I was told there are about 20 of these bears left at uh, Jirisan, the second largest, which is the second largest mountain in South Korea. The first largest mountain is Halasan, which is located on Jeju Island. Um, it is a volcanic island and it's a volcanic, uh, dormant volcano right now. And so Jirisan is the second largest mountain, I believe, in South Korea. Um, in North Korea, there is Baekje Mountain, which is the second largest mountain in Korea. But it, since it is located in the north, um, it does not qualify. <laughs> not yet, at least. So Jirisan is the second largest one for now. <laughs> This is a really great place to take kids to um, because um, it gives them a chance to, to explore and see some things they may not necessarily be able to see in a, you know, in a daily life in nature. And they're closing this place down, there's nobody here, Liam. Uh, they get a glimpse of bugs that, that are hiding somewhere in the forest. Here they get a look um, at roots and what they look like on the ground. You know, they, we can see plants and everything else, but nobody ever knows what plants look like underneath, so underground. So here kids get a chance to look at those, which is really cool. Right there, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have fun, Liam? Yeah. How about your friends? Oh no, Jimmy, so. Whoa, look at this. Blue lights. How was it, Liam? Did you have fun? Yeah. Yeah. That was a, uh, an hour. We spent an hour in his madness. Uh, we didn't go to the third floor. There was there's more stuff on the third floor. We didn't get a chance to get up there today, huh? Do you remember what's up there, Liam, on the third floor? No, I don't remember either. There's a tornado somewhere. There's a lot more uh, pulleys, pull uh, pushies, magnets, and whatnot. So, but that was fun today. Korea is a very children-focused country. There's. Uh, there's a lot of things for kids to do. Uh, there are like uh, kids cafes, lots of indoor activities, roller skates. <clears throat> uh, probably because, like I said, it's a very densely populated country. It's a small country, and so you know there's a lot of people uh, with children everywhere. Uh, one of the main things that I noticed when I first came to Korea was the fact that uh, the neighborhood where I lived was just full of moms, young moms with babies, and it's just. Uh, um, I, I don't remember um, ever having such experiences in Canada, uh, being out in the street and just seeing moms and babies, moms and babies. Most of the fathers are working, um, and so the moms stay at home, moms take care of their babies, they walk around with their kids, so so they need things to do, so, uh, you know, um, uh, kids' cafes and, uh, and book cafes and whatnot, uh, science museum, things for children. Uh, flourish businesses like that are are very appreciated here, and a lot of people uh, lean to towards that that way of income. It, the most recent fad are um, slime cafes. Have you been to a slime cafe, Liam, before? Yes. Yeah. Are those fun? Yes. Those are fun. And that's basically uh, a place where you go with your kid. The kid gets a bowl and uh, three liquids in three different bottles and they dump everything into the bowl and then mix it up and uh, make slime, play slime, which they can then customize the glitter and all kinds of tiny little things you can put into the slime, uh, which the kids did. And, um, and then we, um, we made Slimey, slime, slime, slime. 
that was a lot of fun. So now, I think Liam's knackered. We haven't had uh, lunch. We had very little for breakfast, so I think Liam's running out of juice. So we need to... <laughs> You're not? You're still okay? Yeah. Can you still party like it's 1999? Mm. Yeah? All right. Well, in any case, I think we're gonna head back home and uh, hunt. Hunt for food. Men need food. Living in. That's it for today's episode of Live in Korea. Um, I hope to see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment in the section below if you have any questions, if you need help, uh, or if you have any questions with FutureNet Pro, Future Ad Pro, um, please get in touch with me. Um, I haven't posted any videos in a while on Future Ad Pro or FutureNet. Um, simply because I didn't see any reasons. I actually, I'm actually working on uh, on a, a presentation. I, I want to uh, com compile a presentation of the FutureNet, um, um, some of the FutureNet aspects of revenue sharing, and explain a little bit what revenue sharing is, and talk about that a little bit, and how it relates to uh, FutureNet and and such. So um, I'm still working on it. I'm a little busy with other things as well, but I will get to it. Um, Okay, one. Crypto Father out. Say bye bye. Bye bye.